What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I wanna talk about dictionaries in Python. All right, in the last video we looked at tuples. In this video, I wanna look at dictionaries in more detail. We've already looked at them very briefly a few videos ago, but I wanna dive in a little bit deeper, show you some things you could do with them and all that good stuff. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so dictionaries. We've already looked at these. They're a way to sort of have a more complicated list of things. And to create them, we just name it. So I'm gonna create this favorite pizzas dictionary. And we remember dictionaries are made up of key value pairs, a key and its value. So the first thing is the key, the second thing is the value. Whenever you call an item from a dictionary, you reference its key and then the value gets shown. So we could have a key of John and they're separated by commas. And John's favorite pizza, my favorite pizza is pepperoni. And each item is separated by a comma. So we could have Tim, and Tim likes sausage pizza. Is that how you spell sausage? Nah, whatever. <laughs> and we can have who? Mary. Mary likes cheese pizza. And you just keep going and going. Now, we could put all of these on one line, right? But you might have dozens, hundreds, thousands, and you don't have to put the comma at the end of the last one, I just always do, because if I add something later on, I might forget to put the comma back again. But uh, you can have them all on the same line. You're never gonna wanna do that though, because we've only got three items, and it's already hard to read this, right? Uh, you know, wh why do that? Just put these all on separate lines. That's just sort of the convention, makes sense, easy to read, and uh, pretty simple. So if we save this, and now to actually print this thing out onto the screen, we just call it, right? So if we save it and head over to our terminal and let's run this guy, you can see it prints out the whole thing, squiggly brackets and all, and that's not really what you want. You're normally gonna wanna call specific items from your dictionary. So to do that, of course, we already know how to do that. We just call the square brackets like it was an array and then pass in whatever key we wanna reference. So if we wanna reference the first thing, John, we just call the its key, which is John. So we save this, head back over here and run it. Boom, we get pepperoni, pretty simple. So we've already kind of looked at this uh, sort of thing a few videos ago when we first talked about the different data types. Now I wanna talk a little bit more, give you a little bit more detail on things. So. Let's say you want to delete an item from here. How would you do it? Well, we can call this delete function. If I could type and delete. And then we just call favorite pizza and then pass in whatever key we want to delete. It will delete its key and its value. So let's say we want to delete John. I need to wrap this in quotation marks. Okay, so now if we print out our entire dictionary again, John should be gone. So save this, head back over here and run it. We get Tim who likes sausage and Mary who likes cheese. John is gone, no longer there, been deleted, dropped into the void forevermore. So once it's gone, it's gone, it can't come back. So just keep that in mind and pretty cool. So let's get rid of that. Now John is back because <laughs> John is still actually in there. So when I said it's been deleted for forever, that's not necessarily true, I guess. Um, okay, so now what if we want to add something? Um, let's say we want to add something to the end of this, add another item in here. Well, we just call favorite pizza and then we call the dot update function. And this is a function, so we have these little parentheses here. And now inside of here, we just sort of create a mini uh, dictionary with whatever we want to pass in. So we have John, Tim, Mary, let's put in Tina. And Tina likes, oops, Tina likes what? Uh, green peppers. Love some green peppers. Okay, so now if we save this 
and then just print out the whole dictionary again. Come back here and run it again. We have John likes pepperoni, Tim likes sausage, Mary likes cheese, and Tina likes green peppers. It has been updated, appended to the end, and that's cool. Now, likewise, we can come over here and just call, flat out call Tina, right? If we wanted to do that. Green peppers, pretty cool, pretty simple. Now, let's say, let's get rid of this. Let's say I change my mind. I don't like pepperoni anymore, right? So how do we sort of update something, change something that's already been added? Well, we can just call our favorite pizzas and then whatever thing we wanna update. So let's say John and set this whole thing equal to whatever we wanna change the value to. So. I was really thinking about those green peppers with Tina and I thought to myself, yeah, you know what? Green peppers are my favorite now. So we could just change this. Now, if we run this and print out the whole thing again, we see John, in fact, now likes green peppers. Pepperoni has disappeared forevermore. And likewise, we can come down here and just call John if we want. And we should get just green peppers. There you go. So those are dictionaries. Now you can do all kinds of things with dictionaries. You can put all kinds of things in dictionaries. Uh, you can, I blow your mind right now, this is a string, John. You can use numbers if you want. I don't know why in the world you would ever want to, um, but now, well, first off, let's just run this and see what's in there. 41 and pepperoni, um, but, we could also just now call 41, save this, and run it, and boom, we get pepperoni. I don't know why in the world you would ever want to do that, but you can. I think you can put like arrays also. You can definitely put them in as the value in your key value pair. Not sure why you would want to do that, but it's definitely possible. Uh, so, you know, we can just, we could just test this and see, let's create an array and let's go one, two, three, four, five. So now if we come down here and, well, first off, let's just print out the whole dictionary. If we get John, it's kind of weird, but if we call John, and print that out, Green peppers. Oh, oops, gotta take this out. <laughs> there we go. Save this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We could then do multi dimensional. Say we want the second item in that array. Boom, three array list. In Python, they're called lists. I've been doing some JavaScript stuff this morning, so I'm thinking in arrays instead of lists, but they're the same thing. Uh, so we get number three. And like any kind of thing, you could go plus 10. Run this again, and now we get 13. So very weird. Now let's run this one more time with just the whole thing. Since the first time we ran it, it showed nothing there because I still have that extra line of code that I forgot to delete. And if we run this again, we see then in fact, yeah, there's our, our whole list, array, list, whatever you want to call them. Python calls them lists, we'll call them lists. <laughs> and Tim and Mary are the same. So those are dictionaries, all kinds of weird things you can do with them. Uh, very, very useful. You will use dictionaries just about forever. Um, I can't think of a time I've written Python code when I didn't use dictionaries. You know, they're just one of those things you're always going to use along with lists and variables and basic loops and things. They're just a fundamental programming concept. Very easy to use and very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.